A wee while ago, I decided to try my hand at the famed Wing Commander games, specifically Wing Commander 3 Heart of the Tiger, and while I mostly enjoyed it, the rough presentation and sometimes clunky gameplay prevented me from truly loving it. Though that being said, I totally saw why it's such a fondly remembered and celebrated game for so many people. So I finally decided to return to the series to check out Wing Commander 4 The Price of Freedom. After the success of Wing Commander 3, Origin Systems quickly commissioned a sequel for a then astounding budget of $12 million. Most of this money went into the live action cutscenes. More practical sets were built rather than having the actors on a green screen for most of the time, and for Wing Commander 4, these live action segments were shot on 35mm film instead of the cheap video as before. While this certainly increased the production values, unfortunately it meant the game only barely managed to break even upon release. In spite of this, however, the game enjoys the same passionate cult fanbase who continue to celebrate Wing Commander 4 to this day. Presentation-wise, the game is a lot stronger than its predecessor. Graphically, it's mostly unchanged, but the game is far better optimised. At least, the version I was playing was. The crackly sound and low-res visuals of Wing Commander 3 are gone, and instead the game is much more pleasing to the eyes and ears. The live-action segments are where the game shows the biggest improvement. The extra money spent on the practical sets and film cameras didn't go to waste in the slightest. While I still don't think it matches the quality expected from a movie, it's comfortably on par with the various sci-fi TV shows of the time. The general direction of the scenes is stronger as well. There's more dynamism to the scenes as opposed to the flat coverage of the previous game. And thanks to the aforementioned optimization, the great work which went into the live-action segments hasn't been let down by harsh compression. Though there is still a noisy, blocky quality to the image, it's a huge improvement over the outright butchering which happened to the cutscenes in Heart of the Tiger. Something which was quite irritating though was the poorly balanced audio mixing. Again, I don't know if this is something specific to my version of the game, and if there's a way to patch this out, but for me at least, the audio levels for the cutscenes were way lower than gameplay. If I didn't adjust the volume, it was incredibly difficult to hear these scenes. Sometimes I had to turn my volume up close to full. But the flip side of that is, as soon as gameplay resumed, the ambient audio from those segments would blast out of my speakers. Unfortunately, this hurt the immersion of the game for me. It's difficult to try and get caught up in the plot when I have to keep reaching for the volume control. If anyone knows a patch for this or a fix, please let me know. Gameplay-wise, this is mostly the same mechanically as Heart of the Tiger. The robust, fast-paced combat is as fun as ever. Though I do wish there was a cockpit mode, as that was my favourite way to play in Wing Commander 3. What I really appreciated this time around, though, was the wider variety of missions. A criticism I had for Wing Commander 3 was that the missions were a bit repetitive. Fly out into space and shoot the enemy until you can move to the next waypoint. It was the same in the first mission as it was in the second to last mission. But Wing Commander 4 does a great job at shaking things up. There are more planet surface missions, different kinds of objectives, such as providing cover for a marine squad. There are different kinds of ships to take on. In general, the arrangement and design of the missions feels more interesting and better paced. However, some mechanics were a little bit frustrating. The addition of a tractor beam was nice, but it annoyed me it could only be used in the rear turret. The field of view for the rear turret is very narrow, so sometimes I'd be flying up next to a drop pod, switch cameras to snag it with the beam, only to be completely lost as soon as I changed view. The beam itself was also a little unreliable sometimes, which further added to the annoyance. That being said, I did appreciate all the new fighters the game introduced. The returning Hellcat, Longbow, Arrow and Excalibur are obviously welcome, but I also loved the Banshee, the Avenger and the Vindicator. And while the Dragon is powerful in gameplay, personally I wasn't a huge fan of the ship's design. I do feel like an aspect of the game which has improved as well is the dialogue system. As I said previously, the trouble with a lot of dialogue systems in games like this is with paraphrasing. Sometimes it can be a little unclear as to what Blair will actually say, but this wasn't a big problem with Wing Commander 4. I can only recollect one or two times I was actually surprised by what Blair said, making me as a player much more confident in making choices. This freedom of choice also extends to the missions themselves. Later on in the game when Blair takes command of his carrier the Intrepid, getting to choose which missions to go after was a really fantastic idea. It allowed the player to further cement their characterization of Blair and have some real impact on the story. Will Blair fight to save every life he can, or is he a bigger picture kind of guy making tough command decisions? The story in general though really is Wing Commander 4's biggest strength. The writing in Wing Commander 3 was generally good, but nothing special. 
It told quite a typical space opera tale, taking a lot of inspiration from World War II Air Force and Navy adventures. Strong characters and some solid twists, but the plotting was pretty clunky. It felt almost episodic in the way it suddenly introduced new elements without warning. The writing for Wing Commander 4, though, is a huge step up across the board. This feels like one grand arcing story, with well-weaved plot threads, great character development, and powerful, thought-provoking narrative themes. Initially, it seems like business as usual. There's a question mark surrounding what could be some kind of pirate faction, perhaps, but we're back to Blair, Maniac, Vagabond, and Eisen on a carrier, flying missions and shooting the bad guys. There's an extra flavour of war weariness, as the characters express dismay at the prospect of gunning down fellow humans as opposed to the Kilrathi, but overall it's back to the same old routine. However, as the first act continues, the writing, directing, and performances do a great job of giving the player the impression of something being not quite right. Too many questions, too much ambiguity. And it's this ambiguity which adds a lot of weight to the moment Eisen and Maniac seemingly defect to the union of border worlds, and Blair is given the choice to join them. As I said, although there is an atmosphere of suspicion surrounding the events so far, the player actually has no concrete information. This is a choice made on pure gut feeling, and it may be a justifiable stance to refuse defection in pursuit of some proper answers. But being so tied to these characters, the game knows in all likelihood the player will join Eisen, Maniac, and Vagabond. Afterwards, the writing further emphasises the real weight of the choice Blair has made. Not only does joining the Border Worlds mean swapping out all these state-of-the-art fighters and carriers for some bulky, rusty old ships, but the change is also reflected in the scenes between Blair and Maniac. Tom Wilson has always been a riot as Maniac, but it was awesome to see the character really struggle with something. The usual banter between the two collapses, and Blair actually has to reassure him. It's a really great little touch, making Maniac far more likeable, and the bond between the two turns from a friendly rivalry into something resembling a brotherhood of sorts. The rest of the new characters of the Border Worlds are also great. Sosa is simply adorable, Pliers is a total G, and Panther and Hawk's moral debates during briefings simultaneously tell the player exactly who these people are, but also helps outline the pros and cons of each choice. It's a very strong cast, easily surpassing the larger ensemble of the previous game. Though I do think it was weird to include all these other wingmen who I don't even think ever appear in the cutscenes and never once speak to Blair. At least I never met them during my many hours of gameplay. They just seem pretty superfluous when you have Maniac, Cat Scratch, Panther, and Hawk to choose from. The unfolding events of the next few missions further entice and confound the player as well as the characters. We know something is afoot, a faction within Confed trying to provoke a war, but again, those concrete answers elude us. And while we know not every Confed pilot is a villain, they are still attacking innocent populations. And although the Border Worlds have to retaliate, they know by doing so they play right into the hands of whoever is behind this manipulation. It's just really fantastic storytelling which drives a lot of rich character development. The stakes feel high and the circumstances truly dark, especially after the death of Vagabond and the possible death of Cat Scratch, which he did in my initial playthrough. Even when bumping into Admiral Tolwyn again, we still don't have a hell of a lot to go on. Because yes, while Blair and Tolwyn haven't always seen eye to eye, he seems genuine when he says he and Blair are on the same side. Then again, he is played by Malcolm McDowell. Even so, it's still a genuine shock when Blair finally uncovers the truth. A eugenics-driven sect known as the Black Lands, created within Confed, and whose mission is to wage war in the belief it will make humanity stronger, even going so far as to use bioweapons to kill off the so-called weaker stock. While at first glance it's a bit cringeworthy to have this full-on Nazi-esque stormtrooper squad, on closer examination there's a bit more to it. It works so well because previously Blair has seen the disillusionment of this post-war period, the fighter pilots who feel unable to return to a normal life and have been discarded by wider society, the uncertainty over a future with no common enemy to rally around. It's troubling to see how an organisation like this could emerge and how so many could play into the hands of someone like Tolwyn. The sense of betrayal is really tangible in this revelation. From there, the final act feels truly epic. The intrepid going up against the Vesuvius, 
Atlantis with a triumphant last-minute rescue from Aizen, and Blair racing back to Earth to stop the declaration of war. Although it's a return to standard space combat in terms of mechanics, the context and spectacle make these final few missions feel truly massive. I also appreciate how the finale isn't another space battle, but a debate. Not only is this a conflict of ideology, but a conflict between characters. The best dialogue options for the player to choose aren't necessarily that obvious, as they aren't split between a simple Paragon Renegade system of sorts. It's left entirely up to the player to sense what they should say to expose Tolwyn and convince the Confed Senate to vote against war. It's also, of course, worth complimenting the performances of the actors. McDowell can do this kind of thing in his sleep at this point, but it's still always terrific to watch. And I honestly feel like Mark Hamill is underrated as an actor. Although Tolwyn is stopped if the player scores enough debate points, the final montage isn't a strictly Sunshine and Roses ending. The future is still uncertain and the Confederation isn't fully redeemed, but the last scene showing Blair as a flight instructor for a new generation of pilots conveys to the audience there is still some hope. In summary, Wing Commander 4 is, frankly, awesome. While Wing Commander 3 was a game I appreciated more than fully enjoyed, The Price of Freedom is a game I absolutely see myself going back to at some point. The combat is just as thrilling, but the wider variety of missions and choices offered to the player keeps things fresh and exciting from chapter to chapter. Although there is some technical jank here and there, the excellent writing kept me enthralled in the story and rooting for the characters. I give it a very enthusiastic thumbs up. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with all the new uploads. Feel free to like and share to help the channel grow. Also, keep an eye on the community tab to help decide on the next video. Until next time, have a good one. This has been Rowan from SideQuest. Live long and prosper.